Welcome to Rotary Rockets and welcome to our 1,000 subscriber special. We want to give a big thanks to everybody who's watched our videos, all our subscribers, everybody who's given us a like, a comment. Thank you so much. We have so much more to show you and we'll only grow from here. Now I've been working for quite a while getting ready for today's special building this completely homemade rocket. This is our Assassin One rocket that we'll be launching today for the very first time. So let me take a moment and show you some details about this rocket and the motor that we're gonna be putting in it. Here is our brand new homemade Assassin One rocket. Let's take a look at some of the features real quick. So first off, you might notice it's got a beautiful high gloss finish. This rocket is coated from the top of the nose cone down to the bottom of the fins with a slow drying two part epoxy that gives it a lot of extra strength and also gives us this really nice beautiful finish. Now down on the fins, these fins are held in with our uh, fin binder and backer system. We've used this on some previous rockets. It binds all four of the fins together inside. It's really strong. There's a video on our channel. I'll put a link down in the description. It shows exactly how we install these fins. It's a great system. So further up inside here, we have got our brand new ripstop nylon fabric parachute. If this goes well, this will be the first deployment of this parachute. We've got a video on our channel that shows exactly how to make this parachute. I'll put a link down in the description. This parachute folds up smaller, is lighter weight, and stronger than our previous parachute design. And then we also have a small drogue parachute that will be deployed first, and that will be what pulls out the main parachute. Up at the top here, we've got a nose cone. At first glance, it looks like a regular nose cone, but this is something really special that I designed. We 3D printed this, and the bottom section threads out. Inside here, we've got our flight computer. This is the Egg Timer Apogee. This will provide us with a total altitude of our launch. It's also in charge of ejection charge to deploy our parachute. The ejection charge sits in a little cup down here on the bottom, and then that just gets screwed into the nose cone, and we're ready to go. And lastly, our motor. Today will be the very first launch of our Mega Monkey motor casing. We have been developing this for over a year now. We have a six part series on our channel that shows the design, development, building, testing of this motor up to this point. We have ground tested this motor as you see it here, but today will be the very first launch for this motor. So we are really excited. So let's head on out to the launch site and see what this thing can do. Three, two, one, zero. Watch it go. In. It's gone.
flight time is approximately four minutes if the parachute deployed. I feel like we are way past safety point. All right, so that was spectacular. It didn't blow up. Uh, that thing was fast and high. We lost it almost immediately. Um, unfortunately, we are scanning the area. It's several minutes later. It should have landed by now, whether it crashed or came down on parachute. Either way, it's, it's down somewhere, and we have no idea where. So we're going to start searching, and hopefully we find something. All right, so we're about a thousand feet or so from the launch site. Uh, we just found the nose cone and the base piece. This was this was still secured inside here, but obviously we took on some significant damage here. That, that could have been it just landing against the ground. And this piece here, this is where the ejection charge was and also the uh, eye bolt that attached to the drogue parachute. Now that did, eye bolt didn't attach directly down to the main parachute, so this should not have been something that would have occurred from the main parachute ejecting. Um, but we do see that the charge here for, or the igniter, for the ejection charge it has gone off so the ejection charge did go off ejecting the nose cone now whether that happened at a very high velocity or at apogee really don't know but this has taken on some serious damage and we're going to keep searching for hopefully the rocket All right, we found it. It is quite a distance away from the launch pad. We'll, uh, we'll get the GPS coordinates and figure out exactly how far this is a little bit later. But it looks really good. All right. So... I don't see any damage. And the motor's a little, oh my gosh. We, we destroyed the nozzle. It blew out the side. That's why the, the motor is straight, but the nozzle is at an angle. So we're gonna have to remachine a new nozzle and definitely keep that area thicker right at the orifice opening wow but it didn't seem to have any kind of effect on the performance drogue parachute is fine okay there's there's that piece of that nose cone that just got completely torn off so we need to re-engineer that entire bottom section of the nose cone to be significantly stronger I don't know why that happened because the force from the main parachute goes this way and the nose cone should have just been hanging off of that so it really shouldn't have been that significantly affected by the snap of the parachute coming out but obviously we had some kind of an issue there here is our brand new ripstop nylon parachute with our little shroud lines that we put on came out fantastic parachute is in great shape it's too bad we didn't actually see this perform coming down but one of the main things we were looking for on this new parachute was to make sure that the shroud lines were going to hold in place and that the reinforcing was going to hold in place and this looks fantastic so very excited about that at least at least we didn't lose a rocket and that's a good thing we are back in the shop and we've had some more time to analyze all the parts that we recovered. I cannot tell you how happy we are that we recovered our rocket. 
we were really worried that we were never going to find this and we wouldn't know whether it came down on the parachute or just completely pummeled into the ground so we were extremely happy when we found that we searched for over an hour and a half and we finally found the rocket just under a mile away from the launch pad so that was spectacular to find that now a couple of things that we've examined a little further now this damage to the nose cone on the side here we determined that was not damage that occurred on ejection that was from the nose cone coming down and slamming into the ground reason we determined that is we found the little piece that goes in here and it was only a few feet away from this if that had blown apart in the sky it would have fluttered away quite a far distance but it was right next to it so we really feel that that damage was from it just hitting the ground now the bottom part this little piece that screws into the nose cone where the flight computer was installed the damage on that is still a little more confusing it could have been from our ejection charge actually exploding and blowing this apart and therefore blowing out the eye bolt where the parachutes are attached um, that's quite possible and we're going to research that a little bit further we did have a very powerful ejection charge a little more powerful than we normally do on this um, style of ejection but we wanted to be really sure that this was going to come out so um, the other possibility is just simply stress from the parachute popping out that the line snapping tight just simply ripped this apart um, so we've got some ideas of what we're going to do to change this and re-engineer this um, so we're going to work on that and see if we can make that stronger now the flight computer the flight computer was dead when we found it uh, it seemed that uh, everything looked intact and what it turned out to be is that just the little piezo speaker element had broken one of the solder joints had broken off so I had a spare one, I unsoldered the one that was in there, soldered this one on, and tightened the screw down, and it started beeping. Now, when I first turned it on, it beeped out a sequence indicating that we flew to 5,422 feet. Now, I am not actually sure whether that's accurate. I do believe it. It could very well have flown that high. The software estimate for the simulation for this rocket was 6,800 feet. So if we flew to 5,400 feet, that's only about 20% less than what the software said that we were going to get. So it's realistic that we did go to that height. The problem is um, when I tested this again, uh, it's supposed to beep out the same sequence of altitude that it beeped out previous, and it doesn't. It continues to beep out a sequence of 302 feet. I have no idea where it thinks we launched to 302 feet, because that's clearly not what happened. So I'm kind of leaning on trusting the altitude that it first gave me when I first turned it on of 5,422 feet. We'll be replacing this flight computer. They're only about $15, and because it did get damaged, I really don't trust it to uh, be reliable anymore for that price. And then lastly, the motor. The motor went spectacular. However, this is a brand new nozzle that we ground tested once. It went perfectly fine, and then the launch was the second use of this nozzle. And as you saw in the close-up here, um, out on the launch site, we blew clean through that steel nozzle. So I'll be making a new one of these. I'll make that neck area here uh, a lot thicker so that it can deal with that heat and disperse that heat better. But that was something that was not expected at all. Now, we do believe that it blew out while the motor was still burning but very close to the end of the burn the reason we say that is there's some debris around the cone here that would have come out through that hole but there's not very much of that uh, slag material that we get from the combustion of the fuel just a little bit so the fuel was still burning but probably not nearly enough to actually push the rocket off of its trajectory. If that had happened early on, the rocket would have just gone wild and probably just blown pieces off of it. So we truly believe that the launch, the parachute ejection, the descent went 
pretty much perfect, even though we couldn't see 99% of that, but we were really happy with the final results once we finally found it. Now, just a note, our next video that we're going to post is going to be the complete making process of this entire rocket from start to finish. So if you're interested in rocket design and some of the features that are built into this, that'll be a fun video. And we're also going to work on the improvements for this piece here that goes into the bottom of the nose cone, uh, strengthening that up so that this doesn't happen again. I want to thank you all for watching and again thank you to all our subscribers we're having a lot of fun and um, we have a lot more things to build and a lot more things to show you so thanks for watching our thousand sub special and we'll see you next time